All right, you guys, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. We have um, a fig I want to review today that is extremely special, and I think it's going to be among the very best. Um, it's called Pissoluto, and it's an Italian variety that is really well documented. Um, it's in a lot of the literature. It's actually in Galicio's drawings. Um, here in the United States, however, you just don't hear much about it at all. It's very strange. Uh, there's a Pissoluto white, which is the one that we're going to look at today. And even they're supposed to be, but it seems to be kind of a unicorn, a Pissoluto black. So a Pissoluto Nero, and then a Pissoluto, I guess Blanca is the, is the right term? Bianco. Um, so we have uh, the white version here, and I, I honestly think, like I said, it's really one of the best. Um, it's extremely productive. It does well in this climate. It does well even in Florida. There's a grower in, in Florida that, uh, that grows this one and has really good success with it and all that moisture and all that rain. And you can really say that that's true because uh, the shape. The shape is really good. It's got a long stem. It's got a longer neck although the body tends to be a bit bigger. And I would argue maybe it's not the best in terms of moisture, but it could do pretty good. Now, I also think this fig would do really well in drier places because it just tastes so amazing. Even here, it's incredible. Um, of the limited figs I've had off of this particular variety, I was thoroughly impressed. So we have a couple here that we're gonna pick and I'm just really interested now to see what the deal is, like to really put the flavor, I guess, to bed. Cause maybe, you know, maybe that was a, you know, a misnomer or something, or maybe that was just luck or just a one in a one of a kind thing. But I've got three figs here at different levels of ripeness. Um, you can see that the one in the middle is probably the most ripe and unfortunately has uh, some damage there by the ants. There may have even been some bird damage because the birds have been coming in here, guys, and really destroying a lot of the fruits. Um, I even been really worried about squirrels and groundhogs. Not that I've seen them, but I physically have noticed their presence uh, among the figs. So I've quickly put up some uh, chicken wire around the entire patio to keep out the squirrels and keep out the, the um, keep out the, uh, the groundhog. So the birds are really the only thing at this point that probably are doing the damage. And I imagine if it's, uh, you know, on a fig that's quite high up on the tree, that's probably what that is. And if it's not bird damage, it's these ants, uh, because I have so many ants on the trees this year. I've just, not been able to keep up with it and I don't really feel like doing anything about it. Um, but I'm going to cut these open for you guys. You saw the shape of the fruit. Uh, we got a little bit of a glimpse. Hopefully you guys were paying attention is that it's just an elongated fruit. And to me, you know, maybe not this one here or these two, these are larger fruits. And I think typically that's probably what you'll see as a medium sized fruit. These medium sized fruits, Remind me in size and in shape of like an LSU Tiger, which is like an improved Celeste. It's just a larger Celeste in shape and size and even the, the length of the stem. This one here is smaller and it does remind me a lot of like a golden Celeste. It's got that golden color and it's got the similar shape, the similar stem. So you could definitely see a scenario, a world in which this fig does really well because of that shape. The way that it hangs, I mean, it hangs straight down. I haven't seen any of them split, although when these figs have been ripening, it's been relatively dry. I don't want to say it's been totally dry, but certainly it's been relatively dry. And what's been, I think, really the most impressive about this fruit um, is the flavor beyond just the production I was thinking that this wasn't going to be the, you know, one of the better tasting figs I've, I've grown. I was thinking this is going to be yeah, about average and uh, the production would really shine and the performance would really shine in this climate. And that's kind of why I would keep it. But 
as I said, I've really been impressed with this, this fruit in terms of the flavor. So if you really let them ripen, and this is kind of, you know, just the shame about some of the varieties out there that exist. Um, let me move this actually into the shade because I have my camera. It's uh, set up right now to have a higher brightness to it. So you can see there, that's pretty good. You know, that, they're not bad looking fruits, you know, and I would argue this is probably the ripeness that most people would pick them at. Let me lower the brightness just a tad. And um, so you can see that looks pretty darn good. Red interior. You know, I was thinking maybe this would be a little bit lighter, maybe not as much of a berry flavor to it. That's the problem, like I was kind of getting at before I changed the brightness, is that it's kind of the problem with some of these Italian varieties is that they're, you know, as well documented as they, as they are, they just, there isn't a ton of photos, ton of, you know, great uh, flavor descriptions on these things. This one here is extremely red. Um, and to me, when I open these fruits, just visually looking at the pulp, at least this one here really reminds me of Smith. Uh, and then as it gets really ripe, it kind of reminds me of something that's very thick and sticky, like a really well ripened Smith. So the pulp, oddly enough, I think it's gonna have those similar characteristics. So. Um, yeah, clearly I think it's one of the better tasting fruits that is new to me. I'm going to get one more photo just to this guy, or at least one more still shot of this particular fruit before I taste it. That's a beaut. And then the, you know, the outside here, just, you can see it's not the prettiest fig. It doesn't get tons of sugar spots, but it does get a little ugly on the bottom. Being a, you know, lighter skinned fig, that's kind of just what the deal is. All right. Let me taste this now. So when I first tasted the, the first one I had, or the first couple I had, I was really impressed because it had a really intense berry flavor, but I was like, maybe it's just fermented, you know? It had a really intense cherry flavor that you don't see in many fruits, many fig varieties. In fact, it was so cherry that it was more cherry than any of the other fruits I've ever had. Wow. Yeah. So, it does kind of remind me of Smith. It really does. Um, that's amazing. That's a very good piece of fruit. This is the one that's a little bit less ripe than the one I just ate. Still, it really does remind me of Smith. And if I had them side by side, which I kind of do, I have a Smith I could have... Uh, if I had known, thought ahead a little bit, I have some in the house. Could have done a side-by-side -side comparison. It's very good. I'm not getting the cherry though, so I'm thinking that one that I had earlier that was so intensely cherry, was just slightly fermented and that's kind of what the flavor was, why it was doing that. Yeah. So in this lesser ripe state, it's on the more mild side, it's sweet. It reminds me of kind of like something between a berry fig and between a honey fig, kind of like an LSU Huye, um, or maybe even a Golden Celeste that gets a bit red, or even like a Nin V that's a little bit less ripe. This is, uh, but as it gets more ripe, it really turns into that Smith, and the berry flavor is a bit higher. And then as it gets really intense, like this side here that had the, uh, the bird or ant damage, this is like really almost perfect. Great thickness to it. It's sticky. 
it's seriously, it's one of the better tasting figs I have. Um, I would say for now, I'm going to give it a 4.7. 4.7 out of 5, which is up there with the best. You know, a 4.8 uh, is a Black Madeira. 4.9 is Smith. Um, and then a 5 is like De La Roca. So it's right there with some of the best tasting figs. And you know what? It comes in such a great package. Um, it's going to reliably ripen here. So this is a potted tree I have, but I actually have a few of these in the ground and I have a few of these from different sources too, because I knew that this was going to be such a great fig. Um, Joe down in Louisiana had really good success with this. I saw that on his forum, the Southern Fig Forum a couple years ago. And, uh, you know, he really was the one, I guess, to sort of take me along this journey of, I guess I already at that point maybe had acquired it, but I was really excited from that point on about this particular fruit. And then I have a couple on the ground um, by different sources. And I may even have, hmm, I'm not sure what I did with them because I have... I have a couple of them from uh, one in particular source that was in that pot that we just looked at. But here's uh, the in-ground Pissoluto. You can see the leaves look a lot like an LDA. Crazy. This is the one actually I think from Joe down in Louisiana. And this, this tree really took me a while to get established. You can see the fruit down there. It's got very, very similar shape. Not a ton of fruits because this area isn't getting a lot of light. It is right now, but yeah. And this tree is also very young, but you can see along these, this new growth, the fruit buds here have got the double dots all up and down these branches. So my personal opinion is that this does really well in lower light conditions. Um, and it should also do really well in terms of production because it, it does do well in lower light conditions. Um, I don't know the hardiness. It'd be interesting to find out as a lot of these Italian varieties that are a bit older, have more history to them, tend to have more adaptations to, uh, you know, worse climates like my own. I have to do an inventory of where I have some of these trees because I know I have another Pissoluto Somewhere, I know I have a very small and young one over here on the west side of the house that's not really worth looking at, but I do have one somewhere else, if I'm not mistaken, besides this, besides this pot of tree. Maybe I have a small one gallon sized pot of it somewhere. I don't know. But anyway, that's that variety there, Pissoluto. I don't know what it translates to, but that's very good. Highly recommend it. Um, We'll be able to share some cuttings this winter. Um, and I think in the future, I obviously am going to try at least if that tree on the west side doesn't get really established quickly or that well, um, I'm going to propagate more uh, of that particular variety and uh, put it in the ground. So at least I have two in the ground that do well because it's such a fantastic variety. You know, like a lot of the good ones, like this Black Celeste, I got multiple copies of this, not just in you know a container, but in the ground. <laughs> Look at how ridiculous this is. Holy crap. I mean, this is like consistent too. This isn't, you know, this isn't any nonsense. Good Lord. Um, so yeah, that's a little bonus for any of you guys who sticked around to the end. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Please check out our blog, bigboss.com. We'll catch you guys for the next video. You know what? Um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, I'll see you guys for the next one, all right? Take care.